Hi folks, Aaron here. Welcome back to my anime review. Today we are looking at Violet Evergarden Episode 4. Now, I'm going to say this, and I hope people do not flip out on me right away. Violet Evergarden has definitely been one of those shows that I don't really, I want to say, love as much as other people are. I think it's a very strong show, and I love the emotions behind it. I think that the characters are very interesting, and I think the concepts behind it are very interesting. But lo and behold, I feel like it's missing the mark every week. And, you know, besides that first initial episode, which really wowed me, you know, it hasn't been that great in comparison to, like, other shows to me. And I don't know if that's just my mindset. I know people will give me dislikes for this probably for saying that. But I, I hope you guys understand. You know, it's not... I'm not, And I'm not dropping the show. I don't want to make anyone think that. I still have a lot of love for the show nonetheless. I just don't think it's as amazing as people keep putting it out. Because let's talk about... This week's episode, for example, our story focuses on the Memra doll Iris, who gets hurt in the process, but also at the same time gets um, calls from her family back in this very small countryside home, and you know, excuse me, countryside town, and they ask her to come back to fulfill a, a, a job, but lo and behold, because she's hurt, she can't type. Thus, she brings Violet with her, and. When she goes here, she finds out it was kind of a ploy to get her back to the home because they, her parents don't want her to be working here. You know, it's her birthday coming up, and they feel like she's already been lying a lot about saying she's the best uh, memoir doll at the place. Really, she hasn't. You know, she's not. She's really just more of a clerical worker at this point. She hasn't really even typed anything much. So, you know, they feel like her job should be at home with everyone else rather than going to the city and living there. Which is, I, I think, understandable for any family that comes from a, I want to say, a more countryside orientation. It's always the, th the thought that once you go into the city, you know, you're leaving your family behind, you're leaving your roots behind. And lo and behold, a lot of families get kind of ticked off with that. They want their kids to come back and, and take over the farms that they have or take over, the you know, whatever they have. So it's understandable in one way. But what I feel, you know, was bad about this week's episode is that Iris's story, as dramatic and as emotional as it was, wasn't anything you haven't heard before. You know, lo and behold, yes, you know, she had the, the childhood crush that couldn't see her beyond a crush so she got friend zoned by him and you know it caused her not to want him to be there at the party but lo and behold you know she still he came up there and he gave her i want to say open wound you know of, of the time she was uh, i want to say dismissed you know friend zoned quote unquote i hate i hate using that word by the way so that's why i tried to i was trying to think of any word but friend zone because friend zone i think is the one thing that even guys and girls could agree on is probably one of the worst pains in the world especially when you like someone a lot and, and if someone you really truly love to get friend zone by them is a stab in the heart but at the same token it's understandable sometimes relationships aren't going to bl blossom into anything further and it, it's definitely something that i understand iris story you know it's like i feel bad for her, i do but at the same time you know i think even she realizes that it just wasn't meant to be and that's what kind of triggered her to go into the city and become something different from you know her roots of the, in the uh, countryside but how many shows have done this story before? You know, you can go through movies, you can go through other things, and it's all ha it all has been done multiple times in stories. That's why, you know, yes, I feel bad for Iris. I actually like her more as a character now, because originally I felt like she was kind of a cocky, I want to say SOB, but she really, she, she grew on me a little bit more this week. And you can clearly see Violet and now her are becoming friends, even though we heard, again, Violet saying, I joined for, you know, the reasons of I love you. She's, I think that's like her catchphrase now at this point. I'm, I'm sorry. Legitimately, I know some people have beef with me for doing that all the time, but every episode now she has told someone, I, I joined auto the, the auto dolls, to, to, excuse me, the memoir dolls. I always, I want to say auto mail by the way in my head, and I, I have bloopers already of me saying uh, auto mail for some reason nonstop because I think of Full Metal Alchemist, and it's because of her arms that does that. But, you know, I get that she joined the memoir dolls because she wanted to be someone that finds out what I love you means. I get that. I don't want to hear it every episode, folks. I'm tired of hearing it after every episode, to be honest with you. Uh, it's annoying, to say the least. But uh, this week's episode worked on on multiple levels. It, it was fine in some respects. I, I did like to see that Iris has more of a soul than we thought she really had. You know, she felt like kind of just one of those cocky, I want to say SOBs, like I said before. But she turned out to be a kind of just normal character that has a troubled past. You know, it's understandable. And I like that we also got to see how Violet got her name. She got her name because the uh, Major looked at a flower and saw the color of it was Violet. And he goes, your name's Violet. So it was kind of cute. I, I, I mean, is it the most clever name in the world? No, but it's it's kind of nice that, you know, he named her after a flower, I think. Especially seeing that she's a war-torn, you know, I want to say battle-ready girl. 
best way I can put that. Uh, anyways, I will talk to you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Love is Like a the Rain. It hasn't come out yet from where any ends of what I'm watching it on. So I apologize for that, but I'll get to it as soon as I can. I'll talk to you guys later. You know what to do if you like the review. Bye-bye, everyone.